thank you everybody. Welcome everybody. Uh, certainly we are here to present our preliminary design uh, associated with proposed upgrades uh, to the existing Noble Park. Uh, I guess more specifically, I should say that these are proposed upgrades uh, to the renovation of the existing softball diamond that is within Noble Park. Uh, we are not looking at a, an overall park uh, refurbishment. Uh, so what I have here today is a, is a brief presentation. It's about 12 slides or so. Um, and with that presentation, what we're going to do is describe to the committee uh, where the design team is at on this project. Uh, it'll include a quick walkthrough of the existing site, uh, and also it'll introduce some of our approach and methodology towards the design of the proposed site plan. Um, before going into that, though, I thought it might be uh, beneficial uh, if we first uh, took a step back and maybe just talked about some of the processes that have occurred over the last year or so that have gotten us to the point that we're at now. So this will be, this will be brief. Um, both Rich and I, so MBTW and RFLA, uh, we've been active on the Noble renovation for probably just over a year now. Um, our initial efforts were really geared towards more the feasibility of the proposed renovation project that you're about to see. Uh, and that, of course, was being done in coordination with, uh, with UBC Athletics. Um, our preliminary investigation sort of culminated in uh, April 2019, as you can see on the screen, with a preliminary concept. Uh, and again, it was more of a, a feasibility exercise than anything. Uh, with that concept, uh, UBC Athletics sort of um, took that presentation or those design documents around. Uh, and undertook a couple of uh, engagement processes. The first was with the UNA board. Uh, there was a presentation in November 2019, and uh, James is on the call. James can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, my understanding is, is the focus of that engagement was really to um, gauge the general support for the softball diamond renovation initiative. Uh, and of course, along the way, sort of identify any potential community concerns from the UNA's standpoint. Uh, is that fair, James? That sounds very fair, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, and then subsequent to that in January 2020, um, uh, UBC Athletics uh, uh, undertook another engagement session and this was, was a more general public consultation, uh, which sort of had the similar goals of introducing the project and then uh, listening to uh, comments or identifying any potential community concerns. And uh, again, I'll ask James to correct me if I'm wrong, I, I wasn't actually at both of those events, but uh, in general, um, you know, like a lot of public consultation processes, there was a, a variety of topics. Uh, some were about design, uh, some were about programming or, or the new use of the field, some were about project timelines and those types of things. But, but in general, I think the comments that came back can be described as, as from an overall standpoint, uh, being positive. The responses for the project were, were positive. Is, is that fair, James? That's my understanding, yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, that was um, in January 2020, and um, since January 2020, just recently, we've been, uh, MBW and RFLA has been re-engaged uh, to start taking a look at the design development and the detailed design for this project, which is, which is certainly ongoing, and as part of that process, that's part of the reason why we're, we're here today presenting to the DRC. I think that we would maybe be remiss if we didn't, uh, as part of this uh, presentation, just sort of provide an overview of um, what the key project goals for the project were. Uh, and they are as shown on the screen here. Uh, first and foremost, it was to allow the UBC women's varsity softball team to uh, have a, a, an on-campus venue to train and compete. Uh, secondly, it was to improve facility safety. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, the Noble Softball Diamond. We will certainly be talking about the safety of the field as we move into the presentation. And lastly, it was allowed to, uh, to allow for uh, particularly informal use or for youth uses um, to uh, access and uh, be more engaged with the facility as a whole within the park. Um, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, we just want to make sure that, that everyone has a good recollection of, of the site and where the landmarks and things are. Um, so certainly, and I for, always forget I have a, a fancy laser pointer option in PowerPoint. There we go. Um, obviously, this is Noble Park in through here. Um, the main adjacent street is Westbrook Mall. Uh, the backstop of the ball diamond that we're going to be discussing is actually at the intersection of Westbrook and Binning. Um, 
you know, obviously Noble House is probably a key landmark and, and a lot of people seem to be familiar with the Noble Gardens, the community garden piece that's there. So the piece that we're going to be talking about specifically is not the entire park, but really the uh, softball component uh, of the park. Just for some further site context, um, because we are talking about the diamond, we're just providing this aerial view to everybody uh, so they can wrap their heads around uh, uh, what's existing out on site right now as we go through this presentation. So we are looking southwards, but certainly, you know, Westbrook Mall is the eastern limits of the uh, property or conf confines the limit of work that we're going to be talking about. Uh, similarly, there are a series of existing uh, pathways uh, that go along the north side of the uh, ball diamond and then certainly along the south and west side of the ball diamond as well. Um, so I think that gives everybody a pretty good idea. Uh, we're talking about a, a pretty limited scope here from a design standpoint. We are taking an existing sports field and what we're doing is proposing renovations to that sports field that meet the goals and objectives of the project. This drawing here is just a, a quick limit of work drawing. Um, Really what it shows is, is at the stage that we're at in the design process, um, what Rich and I are envisioning as the limits of work. Um, and as you can see, we, the limits are very tight to the existing softball diamond site. We're not really proposing to move outside of that site to any large extent. Uh, the base plan here is, uh, comes from the as-built, uh, I guess there may have been as built but they were issued for construction drawings for the park um, originally undertaken in 2013. So this is from the original park construction. Uh, it's one of the many base plans that we've sort of cobbled together through our conceptual and schematic design processes. Um, we've used a lot of the university's archives, aerial photos, and I can't even count how many times Rich has been on site taking photos, uh, making sure he understands where site furniture is and, and just various intricacies associated with you know, site grading and those types of things. I'll just jump in too, John, and add that uh, we now have formal survey that was just completed um, right. by Athlete and Mark. Yeah. And so we now have accurate base to mirror into the site context plans that we've cobbled together, as John mentioned. And the other piece that happened today was the geotechnical investigation was completed with the drill rig uh, on the field today, and that all went very well as well. Yeah, so as Rich said, that's the, says, that's the stage that we're in. We're sort of uh, just pulling together the last uh, pieces of uh, detailed base information that we can in order to advance the design of this project. With regards to the current site plan, um, so basically with the project goals sort of understood and the limit of work understood, um, our first initial step was to take a look at the site program uh, in relation to what currently exists on the site. So. This is a schematic we did for the, uh, the current site plan or the park as it exists right now. Um, and really th the diamond is what you would expect to see in sort of a uh, municipal community neighborhood park setting. Uh, if you were gonna see a ball diamond, it's, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a pitching rubber and a home plate and a backstop and, and some notion of um, uh, dugout areas, um, some very simple dugout areas. And really the only thing that's separating, uh, you know, the people playing there from home run glory is the 220 feet from home plate to the existing outfield line. So it's a very typical um, uh, park type uh, ball diamond uh, that exists right now. Um, let's just walk through a couple of the elements associated with the current site plan first. Um, so as you can see from the plan internal to the field, the, the field is predominantly sawed. Um, with the exception of the granular area that sits within the infill and the home plate area, and then is also uh, through the, the warning track in the outfield. Um, the backstop, it's backstop itself, and there's a few photos and images up in the top right corner here, um, is in relatively good shape. Uh, it's, a, it's a typical backstop. It has wood cladding on it. Uh, and from that, that fence or the backstop fence, we have um, two dugouts, one for the home and one for the away. And then your typical four foot high line fence that runs down uh, both the edges of the field and then circles the, uh, the outfield uh, area. Uh, with all those fences, certainly we're gonna get into things like pedestrian access gates and vehicular or maintenance access gates uh, and the like. 
And then in or around the field, um, if we if we went through the detail, the legend in, in detail, you'd find things that you would expect to see, like storage bins for baseball equipment and, you know, foul poles and, and all those types of good things. Uh, external to the field, um, what we have is um, there's one feature element out there, which is sort of an existing terraced uh, seat wall. Uh, we sort of calculated that it, it could probably comfortably seat around 100 people or so. Uh, and then, of course, there's the connections to that seat wall, but also the existing connections in and around um, the baseball diamond, which we, we mentioned in one of the previous slides. Um, so as a result of, the, of UBC's desire to sort of create this home for women's softball on campus, where the program comes in or the key parameter for the program is what's associated with the NCAA softball standards because those are the standards that the women's program plays to. So what you can see is in our legend down here, um, we took a look at the standards and there is absolutely no reason why anybody here should be familiar with the NCAA softball standards. Uh, I have read them. Um, and they're kind of split into two categories. Uh, there's a category for NCAA field requirements. So this is the bare minimum that needs to be implemented on a field in order for it to receive sanctioned NCAA play. And then there's another category associated with field recommendations. And you know, recommendations are uh, for the NCAA, strong suggestions as to other things that should be incorporated in your facilities uh, when you're hosting uh, NCAA sanctioned events. So with that, um, in the requir requirement sections, when we took the NCAA standards and applied them to the existing uh, facility that was here to determine what either was or was not here, um, we came up with, with a list of some key things. Um, so, you know, in, in the missing requirements section, we kind of, there's a, there's a whole series of line markings. So whether it's things like coaches boxes or on field circles uh, that assist with, you know, rules of the game, play of the game. Um, there were some uh, fence height and condition uh, issues that weren't being met or requirements that weren't being met. Uh, there were actually some overall playing field dimension requirements that weren't being met. Uh, things like the distance from home plate to the backstop, things like the dimension between the first or third base line and the perimeter fencing, uh, those types of things. So from a layout standpoint, there were a few items that were lacking. Um, and then there were also, in our recommendation side of things, there were some, some other items too. So for example, bullpens. There's no, no bullpens here or areas for you know, pitchers to warm up uh, during game time. Um, the dugouts themselves, there's no shade cover. There's no, they're fully exposed. It's literally just uh, fencing with an open top uh, and benches in it. And it comes down to being uh, very prescriptive and it's even things, uh, believe it or not, like the color of your outfield poles. So the existing outfield poles here, uh, which I think is shown in this image over here, happen to be black. And certainly when they're playing uh, a higher level events, they prefer them to be sort of a vibrant color so you can tell whether a ball is actually uh, fair or foul. So we took that overall analysis as, uh, for the overall site plan and um, took what we learned from the site and what we know of the program and we basically walked it into what is our uh, being presented as our proposed site plan. Um, so what we did is we actually created a, a template, um, like a, a, a field template for what would be compliant with NCAA women's softball rules and regulations. Um, so it modified uh, the layout to some extent. Uh, the field itself has actually been uh, res resized a little bit. Um, that dimension from home plate to the outfield has been kept around that 220-foot uh, uh, center field line. But the two corners along the first baseline and the third baseline have actually been pinched inwards. And we'll come back to this a little bit later, but it, it looks like we're doing a lot or we're adding a lot to this, but we're still adding it within the confined space of the existing uh, softball field. So we're not expanding into, into the park or the park proper. Um, Certainly in this, you can see that still with internal to the field in the proposed site plan, there's a large sod area. The outfield is, is intended to be natural turf. Um, I think Rich and I have presented quite a few artificial turf projects, so it's nice to be presenting a, a natural turf project to this group today. Um, and what you can see is there's an expanded use of that infill material. 
um, not only just in the infield of the field and on the warning track, but also in around the areas that sort of uh, separate the first baseline and the third baseline from the fencing. Um, it's also extended into uh, a home and an away uh, dugout. So we've created dugout areas in the portion of the existing field that we've peeled back to that 190 uh, foot dimension. Um, the plan for this field would be to um, use the existing backstop in place as it is. Um, we would be looking at refurbishing both the home and the visitor dugouts. Um, that would include uh, the addition of a, a covering to those dugouts and making sure that those dugouts are secure. And then several upgrades along the perimeter of the field. And, and these are some of the key things, and I suspect there may be some questions on this as we get deeper into the presentation with respect to what those upgrades are. We've done our best to key into this plan um, exactly what is happening with the edge condition of the field. So in here, um, you see we have our existing uh, backstop uh, fencing, which is which again is happening down in through here. Adjacent to that, you can sort of see a red line that runs along our two dugout areas. And the intent is that's three meter height uh, black vinyl chain link fence uh, with netting attached to it. And then extending down both lines, so down your third baseline in yellow and down your uh, first baseline in yellow, is a 1.8 meter high black vinyl chain link fence, again with netting, before we transition into what is standard 1.8 meter high black vinyl chain link fence around the perimeter of the field. And some of those fencing heights are also, I didn't mention previous, but are also prescribed in the NCAA standards. So depending on the depth of your field, they have a variety of fence heights, um, which um, are, are prescribed for, for fields of play. Um, other than that, um, you know, external to the field, some of the things that we heard from um, the public consultations uh, that happened, we are showing an area down in here for temporary washrooms. Um, those would be uh, both for the field use, but then also there was a general desire from park users to have a temporary washroom uh, access or facility to them. Um, and then with respect to the site plan, I think the, the only other thing worth noting is, is Again, we've stayed very tight to the limits of the existing field, uh, but you will see in behind the backstop here, we have added a small area of paved surfacing. Um, and that was to allow us to, uh, for game situations, to bring in uh, additional like aluminum tiered seating uh, to support the gameplay that's being proposed uh, on the site. And I think one of the last things I should say about this site is, uh, you know, I'm talking about all the things that are above grade, um, but there is some infrastructure and things that are existing below the field, like sub drainage and, and those types of things. And certainly as we go through our, our more detailed design approach, we would be looking to, you know, incorporate those types of elements uh, into the site to the extent possible so that we're not re reusing the infrastructure that's already there to the benefit of the project. And we're not just ripping things out and putting new in. Also in the package that we submitted to the DRC uh, were several um, images associated with site elements. Um, we included the NCAA field layout requirements. That was more just for everyone's information. Again, I, I don't expect everyone here to be going into the NCAA website and logging on to the softball requirements and checking dimensions and those types of things. Um, you know, the idea of having more visible foul poles uh, we provided you with a sample of what we're thinking the pro mix or gyro surface that we're thinking for uh, would be used for the infield area, um, the bullpen areas, uh, warning track, uh, et cetera. Uh, we showed a picture of an accessible fountain. We happened to notice that there's a, a broken fountain out there that, that really should be replaced. Uh, again, our notion of uh, aluminum uh, multi-tiered seating that could be brought in for, for gameplay. Uh, a nice visual on, on what these bullpen areas that are sitting uh, outside of the field in the two corners um, could potentially look like. Uh, a notion of uh, how the covered dugout could appear. Um, and then I do have more netting slides after this. Uh, we did include um, 
some catalog cuts from some prefabricated uh, uh, details or manufacturers. That's not to say that you know we're already set on using these manufacturers. And in fact, I think we included a big note on these, suggesting quite the opposite. Um, we haven't fully evaluated detailed design yet, and we haven't uh, gone through a product selection process. But this is really just to give everybody the indication or the idea that um, the upgrades that we're talking to uh, uh, out here, uh, some of the elements are prefabricated elements. So when it comes to things like cost and ease of construction, you definitely have uh, uh, an upper hand. On the netting aspect, um, quite often when we do these projects, netting is one of the biggest things that's, that's spoken about. Uh, currently, there is no netting at the existing facility now along, along those uh, first and third baseline corridors. And certainly it would be our intention to improve safety on the site by, by adding some of the netting. Um, so Rich has actually been talking to quite a few netting manufacturers, uh, trying to find out what we can and can't do with uh, prefabricated versus engineered systems. And these are just some graphics to sort of help everybody envision uh, what we're thinking of. I, I think this one on the right is probably uh, one of the most better represented graphics. Um, this is sort of bringing netting down to, uh, to grass level, which, which isn't ideal. Um, what we're talking about is having netting sit up in conjunction with the uh, chain link fencing that's being proposed along the, uh, the edges of the building, um, which is a much more cleaner uh, scenario and look. So um, I promised you that this would be a, a brief presentation. That is, that is the end of the presentation for me.